Hey you guys, it's Britt. Tonight we're here to react to a video that is absolutely going viral over on TikTok. I figured that I would bring it over here to my YouTube channel because we're going to hear from a young girl named Emma. And Emma had a whole lot of thoughts about parenting, the economy, um, large families. There's just a whole bunch of stuff going on with both of her videos. We're going to react to both of them. Nevertheless, if you're interested, please keep watching. All right, you guys, so Emma is, her username is E. Claire Hayes. She has 255.4 thousand followers on TikTok, and her bio says, Emma Hayes, la la la, just living my life, and it shares her email address, and cool. So she is over here making content, and she put out this video a couple days ago, stitching another creator who is a millennial mom and she was sharing her point of view as a parent to say that basically millennials are really having a tough time either being parents and or starting to become parents if they you know want to pursue having children because things are really tough right now historically on my channel I can say that people have always hated when I give parenting, um, you know, <clears throat> parenting reactions or commentary on, you know, what some of these like family vloggers are doing. But what I would like to make very clear for anyone who wants to hear me out is just that there's a big difference between saying this is just common sense and you don't need to be a parent to know that this set of circumstances is dangerous or wrong or whatever versus just totally overstepping the line and trying to really drill down on really specific things that are not hurtful, they're not harmful, and trying to approach that as if I've been through it when I haven't been through it. Those are a night and day kind of argument for me. So nevertheless, before I go off on a tangent, let's hear what Emma has to say. Um, because this video upset so many people. Then she came back with a second video that people were kind of hoping would be an apology, but it was not, spoiler alert. So let's start with the first video that has 2.2 million views and then go from there. Millennial parents and millennials in general cannot afford to have children. Hi, my name's Emma, I am one of 11. So the original creator's entire message was millennial parents and millennials in general cannot afford to have children. Seems like a pretty surface level opinion to put out there, especially coming from somebody who has children. Um, to have that opinion, I don't think warranted a response from a young 20 something girl who lives in Southern California, who still resides with her um, middle to upper class parents, but Emma still decided to step into the arena. So let's hear from Emma now. So I have 10 siblings. We live in Southern California. So one of the most expensive regions and one of the most expensive states. And I'm going to explain why I think this take is wrong. And honestly, this whole mindset that really permeates our society that makes people think they can't have kids when really they can. <laughs> I'll use my family as an example, like in a little bit, but first I just want to point out that the amount of- So here's the thing, to tell people that you can have kids and you're just thinking about it incorrectly is already a very hot take to have. Most couples or, you know, single people who have already come to the decision that they um, aren't able to financially provide properly for a, a child or children, um, those people probably came to that decision in the best interest of the children that could be entering into their family. 
and all that it takes, let's be honest, you don't have to do a deep dive of every single aspect of your life. If you feel like your finances are not in order, like finances and money is usually at the very top of the list when people say, okay, are we in the position to either adopt children, conceive children on our own, whatever, you know, route they want to go through. Um, most of those people are doing a thorough review of their finances and putting that into the top of the equation as to, is this going to be in the best interest of a child or children based off of our current financial position and maybe, you know, what the next two to three years looks like. Because of course you can't tell the future, but you can also um, have a general idea of what things will hopefully look like. So you hit the lottery or come into a bunch of money or you go the other way and you get fired and, you know, kind of lose the amount of money that you have. For the most part, people can at least look, you know, a couple years assuming the things stay the same what our finance is going to look like over the next couple of years at least children that you can have and honestly a lot of life decisions are like big life decisions are just based on priorities so whether that's your career or how many children you have or where you live or what kind of car you want to have or how big your house is all of those things are going to play a part into how many children you can have and i guess i'm mostly talking to people who live in middle class um i'm gonna assume this woman that i'm uh responding to lives in the middle class. She seems like she has a nice house in the background and everything like that. So she's definitely not living in poverty and just growing up in poverty and raising children, like when you're under the poverty line and all that, that's a whole different situation conversation that I'm not, that I'm not touching on. In that video, she's claiming it costs $237,000 to raise a kid from infancy to 18 years old. And that it costs hundred on average $100,000 to raise or to send a child to childcare. But first, I, I mean, I just want to point out, okay, two things. <laughs> First of all, the $237,000 number, she, she says that's just for basic necessities, but I don't really know. Emma's entire message in this video is you need to change your priorities. You are not having the right set of priorities if you feel like you can't afford children. So instead of buying organic vegetables, just buy normal vegetables. Like that's that's kind of Emma's uh, solution here for everyone to be able to go forth and reproduce. I know what that means. Like how is that broken down? And I think that number can vary great, can vary very greatly, very, very greatly <laughs> depending on your priorities, like where you're shopping for your kids, um, what, how often you're eating out, all that stuff. Well, all those little decisions, they add up. Like, So Emma wanted to question what are basic necessities as she is delivering an entire um, summary as to what people should be doing and what they should not be doing if they want to have children. Instead of taking five seconds to look into what are basic necessities, this is somebody who is not even old enough or mature enough to understand what a basic necessity is. When people are talking about basic necessities for children, that would be food, water, clothing, and shelter. Those are the top basic necessities of children or any living, uh, living person. Um, so Emma wants to tell everybody how their priorities are not in line while she doesn't even care to take five seconds to figure out what are basic necessities and where did this number come from. Having kids is expensive. Why do you think that people literally plan and try to prepare to the best of their ability before they even think about becoming parents? All those, you know, like all those financial, oh, you're saving 10 bucks here, 20 bucks, like those add up. So I think that $237,000, you can, you know, like where, <laughs> where is it coming from? And then the, on average, $100,000 for childcare is interesting to me because like I said, that's just a priority. Like my, so I'll take my family, for example, my mom has always been a stay at home mom and that's not a privilege. Like that's it, you know, like that's something my dad and my mom decided. So Emma's saying go to a discount store instead of going to a big box store to buy stuff for your kid. And those little things will add up to help save money for you. Dad had to work harder and had to 
bust his butt so that he can make enough money for my mom to stay home and watch the babies, which is a full-time job in and of itself. Don't even get me started on how I think people just really discredit being a mom. <laughs> That's another topic. I digress. <laughs> but like, my dad wasn't just handed like a salary all of a sudden where he could take care of 11 kids. No, when he start when, when they started their family. So you need to work harder. Emma's solution is you're not working hard enough. While she is sitting in her parents' house that she does not pay them rent to my knowledge she um has her parents helping her do things like laundry her mom does her or does her laundry for her and her father is in a director role that is most likely paying him at least two hundred thousand dollars annually but Emma wants everybody to switch up their priorities. You don't have your priorities in line um, in, in order to be able to have kids. Like, this is just such a stupid argument, but let's keep going. He didn't have enough money to, to have 11 children, but living in America, I'm sorry, you're privileged. If you want to call it privilege for living in America, you're lucky to live here. If you work hard and you're willing to put in the work and, um, you know, based on what you learned in college and or what you decided to major in and all that stuff you can grow your you can grow your salary and every listen being able to be a stay-at-home parent is absolutely a privilege i don't know many people that would argue against that aside from emma here and maybe a few of her closest friends but being in a position where one parent whether it's the mom or the dad or you know if you're in a to mom household to dad whatever your setup is if you're able to have one parent at home raising the children that is a thousand percent a privilege and to tell people you're not working hard enough you don't have your priorities in line and just not even recognize like listen I have had a video planned for a little while now. It's on the back burner. I might, you know, I might go ahead and pursue it again because of Emma here, but I had a video and I wanted to talk all about kind of the dynamic of stay-at-home parents because I have seen far too often one parent stays home and it's usually the mom and then something happens in that marriage or in that relationship and the couple files for divorce. It leaves the mother who has been at home full time, raising all the kids, you know, cleaning, doing laundry, running the errands, all of this stuff. Um, it leaves her there with zero job experience, no money in the bank, um, nothing to fall back on and no job that she can go back to and say hey can i get rehired because she hasn't worked in, in in the workforce and so while i think that it is a privilege i also think that it is a big risk and that was the conversation that i wanted to have because i think it's amazing if you can have one parent at home raising the children that is amazing but it is absolutely a privilege I think that most of us could agree on that. Tell me how you feel down below. Everybody's debt and whatever life, like where they are in life is gonna differ from actually every person is different. So the thing of like, oh, you're this and you're that because you're this and that doesn't work because everybody- So you can grow your salary. So how do you suggest doing that, Emma? Would you like people to just go into their boss's office every, four to six months and say, hey, I need more money. Um, I need to grow my salary. My expenses have changed. The cost of living is absolutely skyrocketing. So I'm gonna need a little bit more on my uh, salary and I'm gonna need an extra bonus at the end of the year as well. Do you realize how few people go into their manager's office and say, I need more money? Do you realize that? And do you realize also the unfairness that at times can play out in the corporate world and the privilege that very often white men have always had such an advantage in the workplace? That's just the way it goes. 
yes, your daddy, you know, got himself to this director role and is making all of this money. Um, but I just think that there's a large part of this conversation that is missing. And that is the, um, very blatant advantage that your dad has by being a white man in corporate America. Literally is different. And even their life decisions where they decided to go to college. I went to community college, so I'm going to have way less debt. I do have way less debt than my siblings who went to a four year, you know? So it's just like, I don't know. I just think that this is a lot more, um, you know what, Emma, everybody is different. And that is why you should have bowed out of this conversation before you even started it. Because for you to tell people, oh, well, you know, this person says that cost of living is going up and millennials are, you know, not having children, like, just allow that to be. Because you do not have the life experience or the knowledge to sit here and make this video as you are filming it from your parents' home. Literally, you're paying no rent. You don't buy groceries. You don't know what a, a budget even looks like there's a lot more that goes into it than just slapping a number on it and saying, you can't have kids. I also want to say my parents did not come, did not enter into marriage with like something to fall back on. Like, you know, there, there was no money that was given to them. Everything they have, they've worked for. Um, my dad has all like, has always worked hard. My mom's constantly working hard being a mom. So I'm just, basically, I just want to point out that this video- Emma goes on this entire rant about people prioritizing their career instead of being stay-at-home parents or, um, you know, that whole nonsensical BS. How would you like people to pay for their bills? Because here's the thing, it's a vicious circle. In order to um, pay for daycare bills, you have to be working. And in order to pay for your mortgage, you have to be working. Like, it's not just a, oh, well, I'm choosing to prioritize my career because I'm bored and it's a Tuesday afternoon. It's because it is the only way that you're going to survive. It is the only way that you are going to stay housed and be able to feed your children. So it's not just a, oh, well, I think that my career is more important than anything else in my life. It's, I have to put food on the table because I have children to provide for, or I have myself to provide for, you know, at times, like Emma is so t out of touch with reality. It's almost frustrating to listen to her just ramble and ramble and ramble and not make any sense at the end of an almost six minute video, but we have about a minute left. So let's keep going. Just not honest because she's taking into account things like childcare, but that's you only need childcare if you're prioritizing your career, and then that's just a priority, and that's not really the like that's not really you know it's not the responsibility of society or the government or whatever the powers that be to ensure that you can have a two income house two income and yeah double income earning household, and also send your kids to affordable childcare. Like those are just your decisions. Like you want you're focused on your career. That that's not. That's something you have to decide in your own relationship and in your own life. That's not something that. So Emma says, change your priorities. You need to just buy what store brand pasta instead of name brand pasta and um, maybe go to the local thrift store instead of going to a store like Gap or, you know, whatever other stores are out there. Um, how do you expect those priority changes? Let's just say that we're going off Emma's life blueprint here. You make those small changes. We're talking about childcare being at the minimum in some states, 25 to $30,000 a year. Do you actually think that going to Walmart instead of Gap is actually going to even put even a small dent in what parents need to fork up to have day, uh, child care for their kids. And if they don't have child care, they can't go to work. And if you, they can't work, then they have no house. Uh, like the society should be like setting it up so that both parents can work and there can be affordable health, um, child care and all that stuff. It's like, you don't even have to be, one of you does not have to be working if, if you really didn't want to because they- So Emma is, completely delulu and let's go ahead and um she claps back in this video 
JK, I don't block my haters because they're just making my engagement go up, up, uppity. He, 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 JK again. Really, I don't block my haters, people who don't want to take accountability for their life because I realize that it's not that big of a deal if a stranger has a differing opinion than me. Well, if you really didn't care, then you wouldn't be clapping back and making this video and then that video that we're going to watch here in a minute. So Emma, in fact, you do care and you should care because you insulted an entire an entire demographic of people that are struggling to keep their heads above water right now. While you sit in your Southern California home, living under the roof, living under your parents' roof, having the bills paid, and telling people to stop buying avocado toast so that they can send their kids to daycare. How dare you? Okay, I'm coming on here to clear some things up and to clarify some of what I said because apparently my video struck a very sensitive chord with a certain demographic. I recognize that I could have been more clear and concise in my video. I was just feeling extra energetic that day and decided to voice my unrehearsed thoughts and post, not thinking it would get any more attention than any of my other videos. If I had known it was going to go viral, I would have definitely been more thoughtful and thorough. I always think it's funny because somebody like Emma wants to come on with this video. She has a cross hanging in the background and how judgmental she was. How judgmental she was in that first video to people who didn't have their, pri their uh, priorities in line according to her and her uh, very small lens of the small percentage of what she has seen so far in her, um, I think she's 22 years young. You know, leave it to somebody with that in their backgrounds who come on here and be judgmental and um, insult people who don't even know how they're going to feed their kids next week. How dare you? Obviously, this video was not intended for or directed at single parents or people living in poverty, like I said in my video, or honestly, anyone who's in a really desperate situation right now. That wasn't who I was who I was hoping would see my video. I was also not trying to shame people who are struggling or to belittle how difficult it is to raise children in this. I'd also like to make it very clear, Emma's video is still up on her channel. So if she really had a... Um, new viewpoint she felt like you know she was just not approaching the topic from a fair stance then in my opinion that original video would have come down and this video would have had a completely different vocabulary in it but she doubles down and then at the end makes herself a victim so let's allow her to rant on economy i recognize it's hard i truly do sympathize with that and i believe you guys when you're saying Times are tough. I see that around me. I know that I don't have children myself, but I have my millennial siblings who are raising children and I see that it's not just this easy breezy thing. I recognize it's hard, but I also want to point out that just because something's hard, it doesn't mean it's not possible. And honestly, the things that are the most rewarding in life are the hardest. The real reason I made that video is because I wanted to present an alternative viewpoint to the kind of like disheartening statement that millennials in general cannot afford to have children today. And I wanted to give hope to those of us that want to have kids, whether that be today or in the future, because like everybody was telling me, my parents didn't have the same economy that we did. And while I think there's a little bit more nuance to that. So if things are hard and they're not impossible and they're so rewarding, then Emma, why don't you switch up your priorities and move out of your parents' house? Get your own place, pay your own bills, and then tell yourself to budget for avocado toast and oat milk and all of the things that, um, you know, you probably don't have to pay for right now. I, I think that Emma is just, you know, I'm here for people learning and educating themselves and all of the good things, but Emma did not do any of that. She came off and is still coming off as extremely judgmental and arrogant for having zero life skills, never having lived on her own, never having children, never having to fill her own cabinets with groceries and pay her car note and figure out car insurance and um, just, oh Lord, we'll make it through this together. Let's keep going. Statement. I also am hearing that millennials can't have children today and then hearing that, well, it's only going to get more expensive, life is only going to get more expensive and it freaks me out that like, so what people are saying is you're just never going to be able to afford kids. I was trying to use that video to remind myself and others who 
it's a dream of theirs to have kids or just a goal of Emma, the cost of living is absolutely through the roof. So to compare what your parents were doing to what is going on right now is just it's it's a really dumb argument you know people are pointing it pointing it out but i'm choosing to not even focus that much on it because you cannot literally compare what was going on 20 one 22 years ago to what we're dealing with currently there is a reason why so many people millions of people have come out and said my god like cost of living like cost of living is such a normal topic on social media right now because it's an issue have kids that the decision that i have some control over what my life looks like and the decisions that i make today and right now when i'm not married and i'm not having kids or even if you are married and you have kids the decisions that you make affect your outcome in life and affect the future like, especially for me I know that the big contention was I don't have any kids so why am I even talking about this? It's because I need to be thinking about this right now so that I can set myself up for the first years of marriage and prepare for potentially having kids in the future. I just think the economy is going to economy. Like, it's always going to be going up and down. And I was just making the case that our decisions and priorities can offset the hardships that are inevitably going to come in life. Personally, I would rather start working to set myself up in the future, a future that's going to be expensive, most likely, and control the things that I can control right now instead of complaining about things that I can't control, like how expensive life is. The only thing that I want to qualify that I said is that the only reason people would have childcare is because they're prioritizing. Emma is also one of those people who, there are not a ton of people like Emma, but her parents are her safety net. And a lot of people don't have that. I can speak from experience. I don't have that myself. Um, so if and when she's ready to buy a house and start a family and all of that, like her parents will be her financial safety net. She will always have a fallback plan. And a lot of people don't have that. They're, they either don't have parents, their parents are no longer here. Um, their parents are not well off financially. They don't have communication with their parents. Like there are so many different situations that come into play and, Emma is, in my opinion, absolutely one of those people who has a fallback plan. So it's very easy to stand up on your soapbox and say, oh, well, I'm doing this and this so that I can be better prepared. But Emma, you have a fallback plan. Not a lot of people have a fallback plan with wealthy parents that they can say, hey, you know what? We're expecting a baby and um, we need to upgrade our vehicle. So can somebody help us out with that? And her parents would absolutely step in to be able to help her with that. Help her with a down payment on a on a um, house to buy. Help with expenses as a whole. So I, I just can't with these privileged people who have parents as a fallback plan to sit there and tell everybody else how you need to change your priorities. You need to budget better and all this kind of stuff. What kind of budgeting do you want me to do when I have no money? There is no money to budget. People are hardly keeping their heads above water right now. In their career. Obviously, that was an exaggerated use of the word only. I know there are lots of reasons why people would have child care. I was mostly speaking in response to the woman that I responded to because I'm pretty sure she has videos saying she could be a stay-at-home mom. She just chooses not to for, for her career's sake. I don't know. I just think that's like kind of difficult to hear of like, I could stay at home but I'm choosing not to, but I'm going to complain about how much childcare is, but she doesn't have to be paying for childcare. And then also proceeding to tell people that they can't afford children because childcare is too expensive. Like, you know, it's, it's kind of contradictory in my eyes. Lastly, I do just want to say that the way that the people who disagreed with me engaged with that video and the just pure vitriol in the comments and in my DMs and in the response videos really says a lot more about the opposing viewpoint than it does about my take. The fact that I can't get on my own TikTok page and share my own opinion that's based on my own lived experience. Little victim narrative, I will throw that in as a separate clip because I'm not going to sit here and continue to have her talk at me as if she has all the secrets to life. Like, Emma, you have not lived life. You know nothing. You know nothing about budgeting, finances, um purchasing a house, paying rent, buying a vehicle, like, you know nothing, so I will add that as a little snippet. But I want to echo this one comment. Somebody said, you didn't phrase it as, there's still hope, don't be discouraged. You phrased it as, 
you aren't trying hard enough and your priorities aren't in line. And that is the problem with Emma. Somebody else said, it's not just a different opinion. It's an uninformed opinion. Listen to those that are actually going through it, like the creator that you stitched. Emma responded and said, like my millennial siblings that are currently having kids and probably, and probably more kids than everyone mad in my comments. Do they count? Or, so she's still getting snarky. I do just want to say that the way that the people who disagreed with me engaged with that video and the just pure vitriol in the comments and in my DMs and in the response videos really says a lot more about the opposing viewpoint than it does about my take. The fact that I can't get on my own TikTok page and share my own opinion that's based on my own lived experience and the lived experiences of my millennial siblings who are having kids in this current economy without all these hostile women coming into my DMs and finding my Instagram and pressuring me to take down the video really is just so ridiculous to me and shows how we as a society are about people who have differing opinions than, than, than ourselves. I give you full permission to scroll past my videos and the videos of anybody else you deem unqualified to be talking or giving their opinion about something, just scroll past. I encourage you, just scroll past it. Their opinion doesn't matter at all. Like you don't have to care about it. My opinion does not affect you at all. Nothing that I said changes your circumstances and you don't need to justify your life in my comments to me or show me that I'm wrong. It's, it's not, I'm just a stranger on the internet. It's just my opinion. My opinion shouldn't mean anything to you because you don't know me and it's just an, an opinion that's different than yours. Okay, anyway, I'm probably gonna do a little TikTok cleanse and touch some grass, say my prayers, pray the rosary, some adoration for some peace of mind, and just remind myself that social media and the internet, it's not a real place. You don't have to be so caught up in it, and that everyone in my comments is gonna be hating on somebody new in a week from now, because that's just how the internet works. Oh, and I also will be deleting your comments and blocking you if you say creepy stuff or put my personal information on the internet, because that's my prerogative, and it's not okay, okay? Anyway, peace and love. Emma, I hope that you grow a few more years and become more teachable. I would love for Emma's parents to sit down with her and react to her videos and hear what they have to say about this because I think this is just such an awful take that was doubled down on. But I want to know how y'all feel about this. You heard what Emma had to say. You heard what I had to say. And now I want to hear from y'all, especially if you're stay-at-home parents, are you millennials? Like, are you just somebody who has managed a house and paid bills on your own? Like, everyone has a voice here in my comments, so I will be anxious to see what y'all think. So, for now, if you like the video, please leave a like and a comment. And if you'd like to see more from me in the future, please subscribe. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.